Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to build this filament roller for your 3D printer, so stay tuned. Okay, let's begin. So why would you want a filament spool holder? Well, if your 3D printer is anything like mine, the stock spool holder is pretty high friction and that can adversely affect your print quality. For example, if there's enough friction, it can actually cause your extruder teeth to slip, which is actually what was happening with mine. Now, the designs I found on Thingiverse did leave a lot to desire. They are either uh, too complicated or they took way too much filament to print or they're too large or they're too difficult to print. With some, there's a lot of support, right? And for example, like this one, it wasn't precise enough. As you can see, there's a lot of wobble, not only on the printed parts, but on the bearing itself. You can see how much wobble that is. And I just didn't really like that. Now I had to give credit where credit's due. I found a design that, like, I like the concept on Thingiverse. His name is uh, SpongyBob1958. And I liked the concept and I took that concept and readapted it and uh, designed something that in my opinion works a little bit better. So as you can see here, this is what I designed up and there's zero wobble and there's also guides for the uh, spool so that spool doesn't wander left and right. It, I also reduced the amount of material that it takes to print uh, this by about 50% compared to the old design. So this should be a lot easier to print, not to mention there's no supports required. All right, now that I showed you the benefits and the actual model itself, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what you need. Okay, so aside from the 3D printed parts, uh, the parts list is pretty simple. First off, you'll need four M3 uh, fender washers. Uh, in this case, I'm using four M4 washers uh, as I don't have the M3 on me. Now here you have a choice. If you're gonna use my model, which I'll upload both of them to my Thingiverse page, if you're using the model with uh, that uses the nuts, you'll need four M3 nuts. If you're gonna use the model that I'm gonna show you today uh, that uses the heat certs, you'll need four M3 short heat certs. You'll also need four M3 by 12 millimeter screws four 608 bearings, preferably sealed, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. You also need a screwdriver or an Allen key. And if you're using the heat cert model like I show, I'm showing you today, you're also gonna need a soldering iron or any sort of heating element that can melt plastic. Now let's talk about the model. Okay, here's the filament roller model. Now this is the heat cert version, as you can see by the brass uh, heat cert right over here. I'm gonna make the side transparent so you can see a little bit better. And then just past that, you can see the 608 bearing. Now, if we hop on over to the uh, hex nut version, as you can see, the hex nut over here. Again, I'll make the side transparent. Uh, this version is a lot easier to assemble as you don't need a soldering iron or any sort of heating element. All you do is insert an M3 hex nut into the, well, hex hole, and you should be good to go. Now, I will be posting this model, which was designed in Autodesk Inventor 2020 on my uh, GrabCAD page. I'll also be posting the step version of it for those of you who don't have Autodesk Inventor. And if you want the STL files, uh, you can go ahead and head over to my Thingiverse page and uh, I'll have all that over there, both versions. Now, let's talk about the actual 3D printing process. Now, heading over to Cura, uh, this process will be a little bit different uh, depending on what version of Cura you have. But the most important uh, settings that you need is uh, the later height I use is 0.2. If you use smaller, fine, but it's not needed. Uh, I use uh, two walls, as you can see over here on the right, and then uh, three layers on the top and bottom. Uh, the last important setting you'll need to know is that I use 20% infill. You don't really need to use uh, any higher. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and preview this just to show you. Uh, my print bed is pretty small, so I have to print two sets of these to make a complete filament roller assembly. Uh, but if you have a larger printer, you can print all of them at once. Now, let's actually go and see the printing. Okay, so while we wait for the printed parts to finish up, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the optional step of processing these bearings. Now, these are the 608 bearings that you know I showed you earlier. And while this is an optional step, I highly recommend you do it. So these bearings are filled with some sort of petroleum grease. And uh, while that's fine for skateboarding or any high RPM application, as when you go higher RPM, the grease will heat up and become less viscous. 
Uh, for this application, since they're rolling slowly, we want them to freely roll. And so we want to replace the grease with one or two drops of uh, some sort of oil. So could it, it could be gun oil, it could be uh, three in one oil, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so first of all, we're going to need to remove that grease. And uh, what you're going to need is either an X-Acto knife or like a really thin uh, micro uh, screwdriver or pick. Basically, the pointier the tool, the better. So what you're going to want to do is stick the tip of the uh, knife or pick uh, between the outer bearing race and also the rubber seal. And then you should just wedge it inwards and pop it out. As you can see, that seal will come out. So there's two sides to the seal. One side has a uh, lettering and the other side has uh, no lettering. So the side with lettering should be facing out just so you know. And in order to reinstall it, all you have to do is just literally uh, line it up and press it in. That's it. It's very easy. So go ahead and set that seal aside and repeat uh, on the other side. Again, just pry up the shield and set it aside. Now, in order to dissolve the grease, you can do it uh, one of several ways. Um, so I don't have any acetone on me. However, I'm going to go ahead and use this nail polish remover, which obviously has acetone. Uh, you can also use gasoline and just make sure that both these uh, fluids are flammable. So be careful. And they also obviously emit fumes. So do in a well ventilated area. So just go ahead and take a glass. And uh, as you can see, I've already done the three other bearings. Drop it in and let it soak for a bit. If you're using gasoline or pure acetone, this should be you know done within a matter of minutes. Uh, since this is a little weaker, I'm going to let it sit for about 30 minutes. After it's done, just go ahead and wash these uh, with water. Let them dry and put back on the seal, but uh, not before adding in one or two drops of the aforementioned oil I was talking about. Okay, now that we have all our printed parts and of course I put together the bearings again, let's go ahead and start the assembly process. Uh, of course, you're going to want to make sure, especially on the bearing rollers, uh, that you remove any sort of stringing because the inner diameter of the bore is pretty important. So go ahead and take uh, one of your 608 bearings and just go ahead and uh, push that into the bearing roller. Now it is a press fit, interference fit rather. Uh, so you do have to push with a little bit of force, but as you can see, once you got it and it's flush, it's good to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat these with the other three. And now that we're done with the bearings, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the sides. So for the sides, like I said, uh, this is going to be the heat cert model. As you can see in the back, there's just a straight hole. It is not a uh, hex hole, which the uh, nut model will be. Um, now, my uh, soldering iron happened to break, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, use a lighter. So go ahead and take a heat cert. If you're not using a soldering iron uh, and you want to do it this way, you can. If you are using a soldering iron, all you have to do is take the heat cert, put it over the hole, and then just uh, put the uh, soldering iron and heat it up until it sinks in. All right, but uh, in this case, I'm going to use a screwdriver. Go ahead and put down the tip of the screwdriver. And uh, if you have an asymmetrical heat cert, you're going to want to pay attention which side goes in. And go ahead and heat it up. After about 10 seconds of heating, that should be ready to go. Just go ahead and carefully insert that. Make sure it's straight. And once it's flush, let it cool down. All right, and uh, that's one and ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the other three off camera just to speed things up. So now that we're done with the heat certs, we're gonna go ahead and finish up with the rest of the assembly. Go ahead and take one of your sides and make sure it's all cooled down from the heat cert uh, insertion. Uh, grab uh, one of the bearings and make sure you have the correct side facing upwards. So you can see that one side has a lip and the other side does not. Make sure the side with the lip is facing up. And uh, as you can see here, uh, make sure these posts are obviously facing up too. And again, this will be a slight interference fit, so it may take some force to push it down. And there we go. That's one. I'm just going to fast forward the other three. Okay, now that we have the bearing rollers installed, we can go ahead and put in the screws. Now this step is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm going to speed this up. But all you do is just take a screw and a washer, insert it through the top, and go ahead and screw it in until it's snug. So this will be fast forwarded. After you finished up putting in all the four screws and washers, now we can go ahead and finish up the rest of the assembly. 
Go ahead and take one of the sides and one of the rails and insert them into each other. As you can see, the dovetail shapes, uh, they correspond with each other. Now I'm using the Hatchbox one kilogram spools and there's a, they have a 62 millimeter width. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that the distance between the bearing rollers, well the centers of them is 62 millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this, uh, it's a little bit boring. And of course, take your other side and make sure, uh, well, in my configuration, like I said, I'm using the Hatchbox uh, filament spools. So I'll have the rollers facing outwards. And this is what you should end up with. Make sure the sides are parallel with each other. And like I said, the spool should align with the centers of the bearing rollers. Now we can go ahead and take this for a test spin. Okay, so this works really well by itself, but if you're using a filament that's sensitive to water, like nylon, with a few upgrades, you can turn this into this. Now, I'm not gonna go over how to build this dry box, but the concept is pretty simple. I will link everything I use and all the designs that I used for the dry box elements in the description below. All right, this concludes this video. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys.